how's it going? Welcome to uh, Snake River Fly Fly Time Tutorial for got a requested fly out there, one that we've been fishing and having a good time with. This fly is kind of a um, evolving bug um, as we've been playing with uh, the crinkles on material and our hydro hackle over the last few years. A lot of you've been following that little journey. Um, yeah, we kind of think that we've got it kind of dialed down to a really super simple. Uh, great looking bait fish that gives you some hollow qualities, some translucent um, effects, and it's a pretty easy one to tie, and it just happens to be really getting them right now in our neck of the woods. Um, here on the Snake River, we have a fantastic fall fishery, and this is one of our one of our leaders, uh, leading flies that we like to to fish um, for those big fish down here in the fall. They eat a lot of perch. Um, and this is a really good imitation. This is the dark version. We also do the light version. You can find them both on the site. But let's go ahead and get started. Uh, gonna start out with uh, Moonlit, straight shank, straight eye, number two. Loving this streamer hook. The gap is proper on it. Um, lots of room to work with on the shank. Uh, gives a great profile and a strong hook. Um, of course, we're tying on our Renzetti. Um, Presentation 2 million and 22. Special model made just for me. Has a little click. Anyway, we're using our Renzetti here and we're tying with some Semperfly 6 aught wax. Love this stuff in chartreuse. So I'm just going to start my thread, build a great base like we always do. We played with this, this pattern, tying the eyes on first, tying them on as we progress. Um, tying them on as we progress seems to work a little better. So that's how we're going to do it today. Backlogs. I'd like to start uh, this pattern pretty much directly down from the point of the hook. I'm going to touch back, but I'm going to build just a small bump here. This bump's just to flare this crinkles on material out just to touch. Um, entire fly is going to be comprised of two materials. Our crinkles on, this is our new color in chartreuse. Uh, I believe we call it chartreuse um, and then it's going to be finished up on top with some forest floor for the dark perch and in UV gold for the light perch. Um, center of this fly is going to be tied with hydro hackle which we love to death. This is a new color um, called atomic cutty belly. Gorgeous new color will be on the site here pretty soon. Um, and that's pretty much what's in this fly. So we're going to start out with just a small pinch of chartreuse crinkles on. We're going to find that mid length. This fiber is awesome because it is pretty much three and a half to four inches long, um, which is great for a streamer material that has some bulk to it. Uh, it doesn't wrap and foul so bad and you also can get some longer profile flies out of that. So I'm gonna tie that in in mid clump, just in front of that bump I created with the thread at the point just above the hook point. I'm gonna do a couple loose wraps here and pull it tight against that bump, allowing that material to circum uh, go all the way around. Stop there. Allowing that material to go ahead and en encapsulate the hook there so we have it on all sides, top and bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to advance my thread forward onto that clump, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch or so, and then work my way back. And now we're going to take, form that little triangle with our index finger, uh, thumb and middle finger and pull all that material back. This creates an awesome hollow fly effect. Um, similar flies patterns done out there in bucktail. If we were to build a small dam right here, we could keep that hollow fly effect going. For this one, we're just kind of looking for it to create that tail. So we'll wrap back over that. That's gonna give us some great volume when this thing is wet. Um, instead of everything just falling flat on itself and becoming a very linear flat fly, we're still gonna have that hollow depth inside of there. So our tail's tied in. Now we're gonna take a little bit of our atomic cutty Hydro, this stuff is awesome, especially for you folks out there fishing, you know, fall steelhead on the swing. 
Um, how about you guys tying um, spawning shrimp patterns for fall redfish and, and bonefish and permit? A really cool color for that. Just perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and come all the way up to the clouser point, I like to call it. Um, it's a balance point on the hook. A lot of saltwater folks use this. We're not going to put this eye all the way up at the front like so. Got a little chip on that one. All the way up at the front like so. We're going to keep it fairly far back. If you've ever listened or watched any of Bob Clouser stuff, we'll talk a lot about balancing that hook, creating a flat riding fish. And now we're going to go ahead and attach that. So we're about, whoops, we're about two beers shy of a perfect eye tie-in. This is a crappy one, so give me a better eye, would you? If you have a bad eye, get rid of it. If you have a bad leg, get pink. Go ahead and attach that eye. Some figure eight wraps. Like to do a good half dozen one way. That'll really put that baby on there. And now we can force it perpendicular to the hook shank and match those wraps. It's kind of like algebra, whatever you do to one side, do to the other. If you do six wraps this way, do six wraps the other way. So there's six each on there on the X wrap. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some imaginary super zap in there. This stuff is bomber. Okay, now those will never move. But we do do a bunch of wraps. Saddle wraps, I call them. I didn't invent this, of course. That's just what I call them. Tends to force those X wraps together. Your eye's gonna move no matter what after you hook a fish or two or after you bang it on the bottom. But we're just gonna do everything we can to get it not to move. Thread tension is a great way to do this. Um, just using a standard bobbin here and our standard wax thread from Semper. Cut. <laughs> Uncut. Okay, welcome back to tying and breaking thread with Lair Bear. Okie doke, we've got our eyes secured in there. Uh, everything's looking pretty good. Now we're just going to take and advance our hydro hackle forward. I like to get a full wrap on the back. Make sure that uh, I've got plenty of fibers going all the way around the hook. And then you can make this as sparse as you want. You know, if you if you palmer it and leave some gaps in there, you're gonna end up with a little bit thinner fly. If you put them right next to each other, like I am, you're gonna end up with a little fuller fly. I'm going for a pretty hollow bug. We want something really easy to cast, something that sinks pretty fast um, and sheds, you know, throws water on 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 the ca uh, back cast. Um, so full works pretty good. We still get plenty of color all the way through the center of this fly, but we don't have very much bulk around the shank of the hook. A few wraps in front, a few wraps in back. Then I like to pull everything back just like a dry fly hackle and attach everything down there. Now really, you could fish this bug probably just like this and have a great day, but we're not gonna. Okay. So now we're gonna take another small pinch of our crinkles on material. Pretty light, you know, not a lot in there. And I wanna just go ahead and set this up to where it's gonna taper kind of nice on my belly. Remember this fly is gonna be inverted. It's gonna be fished like this. So I want my belly to come in. I don't want it full length. I want it to come in, you know, somewhere about the middle of that tail clump. So something like that. And our first little bunch, we're gonna tie in behind our lead eyes. Just doing a little pinch technique here and pulling it right up in underneath. And now we're gonna advance our thread under and in front of the eyes. And we're gonna pull our material forward, strap down, that crinkles on. And I'm staying back a good eighth of an inch behind that hook eye. 
So we're gonna add some additional material. We don't wanna have a kernel clink going on here, a big helmet head. We wanna keep it um, fairly slim. So I'll just take and pull that crinkles on back, come up over it. And if it's sticking up and giving you these weird gaps like this, you can come from in front on my side to just behind the eye on the other side, back up under, and then do the same thing on this side. And that will give you um, that material kind of coming back right off the top of those eyes. So we end up with a little bit better, deeper belly profile. So there's the chartreuse belly. And now we'll take and flip over our Renzetti. And you can comb these around as you want. And now we're gonna go ahead and put our dark back on there. This is the forest floor, crinkles on. A great uh, copper, dark olive color. And I'll use just a little bit more um, on that clump. And what I wanna do is I wanna set this so we're gonna get that taper. I don't wanna go all the way back to the back of the fly, um, but fairly close, seven eighths of the way. And now we'll tie that in just in front of our chartreuse, crinkles on, wind up to the hook eye. Get it on both sides of the hook. Give her a little comb back. And now this leftover crinkles on right here, <clears throat> excuse me, this leftover crinkles on right here will become our head. I'm just gonna fold that back, get everything into position pull out any stragglers, just a loose wrap and pull, loose wrap and pull. This gives you a pretty good looking head, gives you the right angle or slope um, on the top of the head. And now we're just gonna build up a um, small head here. Smaller the better. If you get a real steep head angle up here in the front as you fish this, you'll tend to get um, thread wraps or whip finishes sloughing forward because this is a pretty slick material So we're trying to keep that angle of the head try to keep the head pretty sparse You know, we're not trying to just make it look good. There's actually a plan behind that and I whip finished from Started my first wrap right here next one next one next one next one all the way to the back and now I'll come forward and go over everything. That one slid a little bit. Fill that gap in and then pull it tight. You can't have too many whip finishes on a fly. We've already talked about that in previous previous tutorials. Give that a little clip. Now this fly just needs a little hair dressing. I usually like to take pull everything back and then I'll grab all the crinkles on as a group and just give it a good little twist like so. That'll give us the nice taper we want. I'm leery when it comes to starting to trim these fibers. Um, a little goes a long ways. Problem is if you start trimming these, by the time you get to the end of your trim phase, you probably won't have anything left. So don't worry about it. It's gonna look great when it gets wet. And now we're gonna go ahead and take our favorite tool color, black Sharpie. Everyone should have at least one of these. And I'm on my side making just some par marks. I'll flip that vise over. It's the great thing about the Renzetti. It's easy to flip that fly over and to keep it level. Instead of it riding up or down, it stays pretty level. Crinkles on takes Sharpies very, very well, as well as other markers, Copic markers, that type of thing as well. And so there you have it. There is our dark perch, crinkles on minnow, or as what do we call it, the rectum perch? The rectum perch, because it wrecks them. This is a dark phase. Uh, we also do this one with the gold top, which you'll see on the website in the light phase. I think the big difference is, is at least in our fishery, um, the healthy perch tend to be a little darker, the ones that have a lot of blood pumping through them. And the ones that have taken a little bit of a 
a rough ride down through the dam tend to be a little paler, don't have as much blood pumping through them. At that point in time, they tend to be a little bit more tan. Um, gives you a nice hollow body. And now we're ready for some hot action below American Falls. Thanks a bunch.